So, I'm going to do an after action report on a kit I never reviewed. Um, it's been reviewed by numerous people, including my friend Helmut Barkis, so if you want to check that out, I will link to it. Uh, kit number is 13230. Um, and I chose to build this to try to get my mojo back after moving and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so let's just look at how it went together. This August I was lucky enough to get to drive around in one and uh, kind of play around with the inside of it and um, you know all around get to know the thing a little bit better than I do most German armor on account of I've never been near anything other than a Hetzer. So Hetzer is kind of like apart from Tiger becoming kind of special to me. It seemed natural to want to build a Hetzer when I was trying to get the mojo back because man it really goes away when you have no space. So all right so Famously, this kit is relatively easy to put together. Although, you may not know this, I have messed up a couple of Academy Armor kits uh, that I did as reviews because I make mistakes. This one, however, went to plan. So, um, they start out with uh, the lower bogey stuff. So, you know, these little bogeys getting attached to the hull, super easy. Um, really, really simple stuff. All the springs, the way that the... Uh, uh, like where the sprocket mounts and the idlers and everything super simple very low part count Nothing to talk about um, The wheels are actually pretty good um, notably I've discussed with um, Anybody that's built Hetzer's you know what the, the good kits are and apparently the Edward one which I have with the interior has weak uh, Poorly molded wheels, so it has some limitations if I build that I plan on swapping in some wheels from uh, a Waffenträger I have but all this stuff was good. You have choice of using um, different idlers, which I think is kind of fun. I had the same kind down here, what it called for. So the tracks are very early on in the build, and they are length and length. And mine went perfectly for once, which was great. Um, nothing really to complain about. How I do them is um, I just do the singular ones, which go around the sprocket and the idlers, like magic tracks, and I glue that to the large, stiff, uh, you know, these long pieces here. Basically, just do it like magic tracks, just keeping my eye on where these parts are. There's a large um, run here, and then this one and this one. So it's relatively easy as long as you get those kind of spots in a position, like let's say this kink between these two pieces, as long as that's there. Everything else will pretty much wrap around, and it didn't give me any hard time at all, which was nice. Oops. Gun's still uh, not good. In. You know, the, the rear plate, again, super simple. I mean, if you look at it, there's like seven parts on here, like including these spare tracks. So it's really nice kind of Tamiya style build to get back in the groove if you're ever feeling down and out. Then we got into the, like these doors here. There's not too much to it. Um, obviously this tiny little piece of photo etch, um, the spare tracks in the exhaust pipe is really quite simple. Now I did make one change which is they have you put in the sight and the, um, the scissors periscope which looks a little frumpy. Um, it's like pointing a little bit that way but that's all right. Um, I used a dragon sight for the gun and you can't see it now but I actually kind of glued some pieces in together to hold it correctly because the piece they have you use for the sight um, one isn't clear I don't know that I'll mask it but this one is a, a dragon clear one and it kind of just sits in the hole where the sight comes out and you can like see the mechanism for how it's being pushed in there like it's real little chintzy so I just kind of built the thing up and then put a dragon one in there thought it looked better then you've got a bunch of periscope guards to put on um, nothing too hard about that I would say that when you're gluing hatches, if you do this guy, keep an eye on um, where what's going to lean on what. Like if you glued this open when you were doing hatches or anything or any of these, you need to know where those periscope guards are. The jack is a little bit less complicated than a dragon piece, but it's fine. Um, I have my uh, attachments for the side skirts on, but not the side skirts themselves. For now, for painting, but I might leave them off anyway, because I'm not terribly fond of how a Hetzer looks with them on. The gun assembly is pretty simple. I mean, you can see in here, there's not a whole lot of like realism to it. Kind of just like a counterweight size thing. And you know, it moves around kind of like a Tamiya gun would, but it's okay. Um, the barrel does look acceptable. So, and there are two different ones in there. Then really you just have this, um, the remote MG, which actually gave me a little trouble. I think I was just, I think I did most of this in one day, two separate days, I think. So, um, it just was a little bit more complicated than the rest of the build. Um, not compared to like a normal build, but I was just being kind of derpy that day. Now one specific thing that I did that's not required in the kit, I drilled out all the holes in the toolbox. I think that looks a little bit nicer than it did because um, that's what they really look like. So that's one thing you can do. 
And then my one gripe, and I, I didn't notice it until it was too late. If you look here, so these white marks are nothing. You know, those aren't actually there. But if you look at the back side of the vision slit, there's ejector pin marks right there. And I was just on autopilot and glued it in and didn't see them until they were already on there. And I was like, well, I can rip it off, but meh. That isn't even a hole into the hull, which I wish it was. This is like just a little notch that you glue that into. So that's a little bit unrefined. But overall, I think um, it looks like a Hetzer, so it's fine with me. And it was relatively easy, and it did get me back in the groove in a big way um, because I, I went straight from that into finishing the Sherman uh, and then into the Sharn Horse, which I'm working on now. So, like, it's a nice little step build. So, overall, I think this thing is actually uh, pretty excellent. So I thought I would share a couple things that I learned from getting to drive around in a real one um, just at the end of this, you know, just to share information. So um, one thing I don't know if anybody's ever thought about, but is how to get up on this thing. We did by, well, there was a, a little step on the back of the one that I, I was on. So I think that might be what this is representing, but you basically climb up, you know, from here back up onto the rear but that's much harder if the vehicle has been running, which I also did. I got on it a few times, and um, if the exhaust, the one I was on had an earlier type exhaust, you know, the really wide one, but um, that heats up unbelievably hot, like we all talk about as modelers, you know, or it rusts really easily. So you have to avoid the exhaust when climbing on, which is actually kind of difficult because it, it warms up like that whole area to like, you know, burn to the touch, so that's interesting. This angle, is steeper than I think I thought it was. So the Academy figures where they have the guy like laying on here, not saying that's not possible, but A, he'd burn his feet if he was laying on it um, while it was moving. Uh, but this is actually pretty slippery uh, as far as like the grade. This commander spot here, um, right underneath here, there's a step. And then it's only about as big as this little hatch is. And then down there, like if you stepped forward, it's the actual floor. So you can stand back here and you'll be higher up. And then if you step down, then your eyes will be just at about the level where the, the roof plate is. So you're still kind of, you can, well, someone my size, it's 5'6", can stand up completely and still see out over that, that plate. Um, the rounds were bigger than I expected them to be. That was kind of an interesting thing. Um, the vehicle was also quieter and rode smoother and faster than I expected. So, um, it's really interesting. It's kind of surreal when you, you think you kind of get how something would be and then you get to, to drive around on it. Um, one really, really interesting thing that, um, Mark taught us when we were playing around with this thing is that right in front of the scissors periscope there are buttons that you, if you're standing in this spot, you press that tell the driver which way to go because he can't see very well. He's just seeing through that, right? So the guy with his head out here, and especially in the case where we were um, in, a, in a residential street, uh, whoever's standing here can direct the driver by telling him which direction to turn or to stop. Yeah, he just presses like buttons and then there'll be an indicator in front of the driver and then he'll just turn this way. This is especially important when you need to, uh, in the case of where I was, we drove it back to where we were and then we needed to back it into the woods, which is kind of fun because it's sort of an ambush position, but we had to back it into the woods um, and there's no way to do that other than someone directing the driver because the driver certainly can't see backwards, so someone needs to stand there um, and look backwards and then direct the driver with those buttons. So those buttons are right there and the driver's down here. Um, you know, it's a much smaller vehicle than you think. I again suggest anybody who has an interest in them watch um, Nick Morin's video, although he's very negative about Petzers, but it does show you better than the footage that I got um, how cramped it is in there. It's very, very small in there.